हेलो एवरी वन थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग अस एट आईसर पुणे फॉर सेलिब्रेटिंग द नेशनल साइंस डे टुडे वी होप टू कम्युनिकेट सम ऑफ द रिसेंट एडवांसेस इन साइंसेस दैट हैव इम्पैक्टेड आर लाइफ्स डायरेक्टली एंड फॉर दैट वी आर इन कॉन्वर्जेशन विद प्रोफेसर श्रीवत सन फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ केमिस्ट्री एट आईसर पुणे हिज ग्रुप वर्क इन द डोमेन ऑफ केमिकल बायोलॉजी एंड मेनली द न्यूक्लिक एसिड केमिस्ट्री सो थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग अस वी आर वेरी हैप्पी टू हैव यू हियर to begin with we would like to know more about your research so what does nucleic acid chemistry research really mean yeah first of all thank you for the invitation and then i'm very glad to be part of this program and i would also like to appreciate the science activity center and the science media center for organizing this wonderful uh, uh, program on the national science day and i'm very glad to be part of this program and coming back to your question on uh, our research groups research interest we are basically developing um, nucleic acid labeling platforms and probes to understand the structure and function of nucleic acid i'm sure the audience watching this program should be familiar about dna and as we know dna stores information and transfers information from one generation to another it is not just dna that stores and transfers genetic information there is another molecule called rna which also stores and transfers genetic information okay for example uh viruses like hiv and coronavirus store genetic information in rna another important point i would like to bring here is that dna apart from forming classical double helical structure can also order out various other structure and these structures are very important in controlling the protein expression levels in cells so our group is concentrating on developing fluorescent nmr and x-ray diffraction probes to understand the structure function relationship of mainly therapeutically relevant nucleic acid molecules so that's really interesting and uh, in last one year the dna chemistry has played a huge role uh, especially in tackling the covid-19 pandemic and as the pandemic began i think every nation tried to expedite testing to see if people are positive and uh, one of the techniques the rt pcr techniques i think really relies on on the dna and rna chemistry uh, could you please walk us through some of these techniques that that are used to detect the covid-19 yeah one of the things which you said is absolutely right it is important to keep on testing and uh, testing is the way to control the spread there are mainly two techniques which are used uh, for uh, testing coronavirus infection uh, one of the techniques is rt q pcr which is reverse transcriptase followed by quantitative pcr analysis and the other technique is based on uh, immuno assay which relies on uh, detecting antibodies which are raised upon exposure to the virus right the rt pcr technique is the gold standard technique because one could detect very low copies of the virus as compared to the antibody based testing which requires a reasonable amount of antibody which is which has to be generated by the patient right okay so per se the immuno rapid testing uh, does not uh, give information if the person is having infection or not but then it's a good thing that if the antibody is there the patient has responded to viral infection okay but then rt pcr is Uh, the best technique i would say because you can uh, detect the infection even at the early stage right so how does this technique function okay so i will walk you through the whole process of uh, rt qpcr technique but then before that we should understand how the virus infects the human okay. cells and that will give an understanding of what we are actually detecting in rt qpcr technique right first we look at how uh, coronavirus infects human cell coronavirus binds to certain receptors present in the human cell and it gets internalized once inside the cell it breaks open and then releases the uh, rna which actually has the genome information or genetic information of the virus now this genomic rna is converted into several of the viral specific proteins by using the host cell machinery and these proteins are then packaged again to produce several of the viruses which then gets outside the cell and starts infecting other cells this way uh, the coronavirus infects the cell and as well as uses a host cell machinery to propagate now one can use the information present in the genomic rna to develop diagnostic tool uh, 
in order to develop RTQPCR based uh, diagnostic system, one requires primers and probes which will specifically target the genomic RNA and that we are going to look at it in detail. First we collect the swab and from the swab we isolate the RNA by using a RNA isolation kit. Now this RNA has to be converted into DNA and then the DNA has to be amplified several times by using a reaction called polymerase chain reaction. In order to do this step of converting RNA into DNA and then further uh, exponential enrichment by polymerase chain reaction, you need viral specific DNA primers. And once we amplify these uh, DNA sequences, then you need a way to detect these amplified DNA sequence. For that, we use DNA probes. And finally, we interpret the fluorescence data and uh, identify if the sample contains the virus or not. Okay. To confirm the infection, we need to detect the presence of 2 to 3 viral RNA genes. Based on the WHO recommendation, we usually detect E gene, N gene and RDRP which are very important for the life cycle of the virus. Let us look at the steps involved in the RTQPCR technique. Once we isolate the viral RNA, it has to be converted into cDNA and this process is performed by a reaction called reverse transcription. This reaction uses an enzyme called reverse transcriptase, the monomer, DNTPs and importantly a DNA primer. And this reaction essentially extends this primer depending on the code which is present in the viral RNA to produce the cDNA. Now we have to amplify the cDNA by a process called polymerase chain reaction. Here what we do is that we use a, another primer Next what we do is that from this step cDNA to double standard DNA, we keep repeating this step multiple times in presence of forward primer and a reverse primer to produce billions of copies of DNA. Essentially what we have done is that from one copy of RNA by polymerase chain reaction, we have created billions of copies of uh, DNA which essentially has the information stored in the RNA this is in an exponential fashion. Now to detect the amplified DNA, we use a fluorescent DNA probe and I will show how it is done in a reaction. During each cycle itself, we uh, start to detect the uh, amplification process and what happens is that the DNA probe binds to the viral cDNA. In this form, the fluorescence of this particular probe is very weak. It is actually practically uh, there won't be any fluorescence. That is because we have a quencher and a fluorophore due to interaction. Okay? So what happens is that the fluorescence of this probe is very weak. Now what happens is that during the extension time, the DNA polymerase extends till this point and then it encounters this DNA probe and hence it cannot extend further but then this DNA polymerase has a unique property of breaking this probe DNA into pieces like this. So what happens is that the DNA probe is broken down into pieces and then it further extends to form a double stranded DNA. Okay. In this process what happens is that the quencher and fluorophore are separated and hence this leads to enhancement in fluorescence intensity or increase in fluorescence intensity. This increase in fluorescence intensity will depend on the amount of DNA present in the system. So what happens is that as you amplify by PCR cycle, what will happen is that if the viral RNA is present which is converted into viral DNA and it keeps on amplifying, then what should happen is that you should get an incremental or progressive increase in fluorescence intensity. Okay. So a typical RTQPCR fluorescence data would look like this. 
and based on the cycle threshold one could determine uh, the infection. This is a complete workflow of uh, detection of coronavirus by RT-QPCR technique. So these primers or the fluorescently labeled probes that are used in RT-QPCR, how are they typically manufactured? The oligonucleotide primers and probes required for RT-QPCR testing is uh, essentially made on a uh, DNA synthesizer. Okay. My students will now explain how this uh, technique works and what is the chemistry which is involved in this whole process of uh, synthesis of primers and probes and how RTQPCR works. That's great. So let's go to his lab and really see how these primers are made. DNA is a polymer made up of deoxygonosine, deoxyadenosine, thymidine and cytidine. These nucleobases are connected via phosphodiester linkage in the DNA. Now let us consider DNA as a necklace which consists four different colored beads which are connected uh, in the string which we, uh, like a phosphodiester linkage. This DNA necklace can be synthesized by using simple cycles which consist simple chemical reactions. In the first step, the protecting group on the nucleobase is removed. Further, the free hydroxyl group is reacted with the upcoming other nucleobase to get the dinucleotide which consists trivalent phosphorus. Further, this trivalent phosphorus is converted into the pentavalent phosphorus by using oxidation process. In the next step, again the protecting group is removed and then further the hydroxyl group is reacted with the another third nucleobase to get the trinucleotide. Now in the similar way, the whole process is repeated to get the desired DNA oligonucleotide sequence. Now let us see how this DNA uh, necklace can be synthesized by using DNA synthesizer instrument. So these are the building blocks which we have attached here like A, G, C, T and the other reagents which required from the coupling reactions like deprotect deprotecting agent, coupling agent and the oxidizer. We feed the desired DNA sequence in the instrument which can be further sent to the DNA synthesizer. Now depending upon the DNA sequence, uh, the building blocks like A, G, C, T will transfer into the reaction vessels and which the cycle which I explained earlier depending upon that the deprotecting agent, coupling agent and oxidizing agent will transfer to the reaction. Now in this way we will get a desired DNA oligonucleotide sequence. Using same cycle, we can also synthesize a fluorescent DNA oligonucleotide. Here we have other port where we can keep the modified uh, nucleobase monomer and the cycle which I explained earlier, one can get probe which have fluorescent modification and the primers for RT-PCR. Now once we get the desired DNA oligonucleotide sequence, we purify this DNA oligonucleotide by using gel electrophoresis. Further, the purity and the identity of this DNA confirmed by using further instrumental analysis. So now let us see how gel electrophoresis apparatus can be used for purifying DNA oligonucleotides. The gel electrophoresis method is a method to purify or separate biomacromolecules such as DNA, RNA, protein based on their size and charges. Here we use polyacrylamide gel as a medium to separate. First what we do is that we load the DNA onto the uh, polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis apparatus and as we know DNA is negatively charged when we apply a negative potential what would happen is that due to charge repulsion the DNA would move along the gel matrix and because of the size they would get separated. Now what we do is that we remove the gel and then we visualize using a certain technique and identify the desired band we cut it out and extract it in a buffer. Now we have the DNA purified and this purified DNA will be tested for its purity by using high performance liquid chromatography technique. So thank you for explaining the process of RTQPCR and the science behind it. Uh, I can imagine that as the pandemic started uh, for a country like India that has huge population, uh, especially indigenizing the process of making these diagnostic kits was a very important process. Yeah, you're absolutely right. <clears throat> it is very important to indigenize these diagnostic kits if we have to become Atmanirbhar. Uh, 
the main components of RTQPCR, I would say, is the RNA isolation system or isolation kit, the monomers which are necessary for the primer synthesis, DNA primers, fluorescent probes, DNTPs, and enzymes. Most of these components of the RTQPCR uh, technique is actually uh, purchased from foreign vendors. And since several of the countries are testing in a humongous scale, uh, it becomes necessary that we make our own kit in India. And if these uh, diagnostics can be wholly made in India, then two things can happen. One is that the accessibility will be fast and also we would dramatically reduce the cost of the testing kits. Definitely. So, I completely agree with your view of becoming more Atmanirbhar uh, and in that regards your lab has played a very important role in indigenizing this process. So, we would also like to know more about that. The Center for Cellular and Molecular Diagnostics situated in uh, Bangalore has recently launched a project called Indigenization of Diagnostic. It is called the INDEX program and this INDEX program is funded by Rockefeller Foundation United States. This INDEX project aims to actually uh, have a very good supply chain of Indian companies which are actually making reagents and enzymes for uh, COVID diagnostic kit. ISA Pune is one of the centers of excellence in this program and we are mainly dealing with the chemistry aspects of this diagnostic kits. Wow. And uh, I am heading this uh, center and what we do is that we give an end-to-end -end, uh, chemical characterization and functional characterization of the chemical components which go into making RTQPCR uh, diagnostic kit such as the monomers, uh, the primers, probes, DNTPs. Okay. In this way, we help the companies to actually maintain the very high standards which are required for uh, diagnostic kit development. Right, because you don't want false negatives and false positives that something that, that most of us are worried about, especially yeah, while… Uh, definitely, we need to have very high standards of these uh, diagnostic kits because I told you like uh, the RNA is the one which is very important in this uh, diagnosis process and RNA is not very stable. Right. So, uh, we need to have reagents which are uh, RNAs and nuclease free so that we, we avoid uh, false negative or false positive uh, results. That's great. and. Uh, we really wish you all the best in this journey to make these kits indigenized and hope to see a completely indigenized kit very soon. Yeah, through this index program, we would like to have, we aim to actually produce uh, 1 million kit per day. So, it would be great to see that happen and uh, I was just wondering if these probes, the fluorescent probes uh, that you were talking about, can they be used for other diagnostic tests or Sure, uh, per se RTQPCR technique is a very general technique and it can be used for detecting other pathogens or viruses. Wow. You have to just change the primer sequence and uh, the probe sequence which will be specific for that particular viral genome and then you can develop diagnostics, uh, di uh, diagnostic kit. So, uh, becoming uh, self-sufficient is going to really be helpful mm -hmm. and this could really help uh, our healthcare system. So, that's really great to hear and uh, in a way developing these testing kits or indigenizing them will really make our healthcare system future proof. So, that's wonderful to hear. Uh, we would love to hear more from you, but uh, the time is short. So, we would like to ask you one last question, which is any message to our viewers for or on the occasion of this National Science Day, would you like to communicate something to our viewers? Sure. Uh, in my opinion, education and healthcare system is the backbone of any progressive nation. As the proverb goes, a sound mind is in a sound body, meaning a healthy body with a mind capable of positive, good and free thinking is very important. Right. And this also happens to be the theme of the National Science Day 2021. Uh, which says that science, technology and innovation and its impact on education, work and skills. Right. And so, what I would like to say to the young colleagues and uh, teachers is that uh, have a good scientific temper and think rationally and uh, it is going to happen that you know certain phenomena and certain questions may not be readily answerable at this time, right. but then that is what a science is. Okay? So, we have to search for it. 
and then you would uh, with a sound mind and sound body, I think you should be able to answer those questions in future. Right. So, science is ever evolving. Exactly. And we should keep practicing it. And finally, I would also like to add my thoughts on women in science. For quite some time, their representation uh, was very low, yes. but now I think it is getting much better. For example, I have 12 students and 8 are girls actually. That's very good. I would encourage women to take science as a career option and if they can become part of the mainstream science and technology initiatives, that will greatly help our society. Definitely. So, thank you for that great message and thank you for being here. It was great to talk to you. Uh, thank you so much. And it's my pleasure to be part of this program. Thank you.